Hi all. Before I do another post-mortem, but um, of a recent GM game, Nigel Shorts had a brilliant performance of around 3,000 recently at the Siegman and Co. Um, tournament. Um, so he was playing um, Emmanuel Berg, I think his first name is Emmanuel, who I bumped into at Gibraltar. Berg's a nice guy. Let's see what happened um, from the point of view of post-mortem analysis. I wonder if we should flip the board or not. We'll, we'll take it from White's side, sorry. Okay, so Nigel Short playing White. So he played d4, he opened Sicilian. After a6, he played bishop d3. So um, he's prepared you know, not to go into that English attack system with bishop e3 if, if certain configurations from black. So bishop c5. So that's a bit unusual. After knight b3, bishop goes back to e7. So it's almost as if... Okay, black could transpose now into a sort of Shaveningen type setup. Um, Nigel plays a4 now, so perhaps he's got you know already this idea of bishop e3 and targeting b6 because he's going to play a5 later. So it's nice and positional, it seems. Um, so a5, so it doesn't really seem like this whole system is geared up for for a hack attack. It's more hack attack. It's more about you know trying to strangle black. So um, positioning after knight f6, castles, castles, knight c3. Um, the evaluation, as you see, it's it's okay here at the moment. 0.25, nothing special for white. After e5, yeah, it goes up. It does jump up a little bit. So it's a bit maybe it's a bit of a controversial move, at least from an engine perspective. It is weakening like these light squares, particularly d5. Um, it's fixing the pawn structure. Um, so Nigel plays bishop e3, so he's still targeting this b6. So his evaluation is slightly higher. What could have black done instead to, to maintain more equality? Knight c6 is the is preferred move, so that's sort of keeping the evaluation. So after this, there was a bit of a jump. So bishop e3, bishop e6. So on the other hand, you know, black's given the e6 square for the bishop, so maybe that's the idea. But knight d5, did that come as a surprise move to play knight d5 here? Engine moves queen f3, even rook a4. This is odd. Rook a4 looks like an odd move. What what would be the purpose of that? Um, if black can play d5 here, so e takes, for example, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. Doesn't black free free this game? Perhaps um, f4 apparently, but it's the the advantage is gone. Oh, it's about the same. So what Nigel played was was maybe more um, fixing his advantage. It was an interesting move, knight d5. So the idea is, after takes ed, if black takes, the bishop takes h7, so the king side slightly weakens. And here, um, queen takes d5, say so queen d7, rook moves, there's an advantage for white still, but it's again, it's it's really nothing special. It's 0.28. Maybe black has survival chances. So in the game, um, Berg he didn't go for that. He didn't go for like taking a land white to take on h7. He just played knight c6, and now white does sort of follow this strangulation strategy a bit more with c4. And you can see the advantage is getting more solid now. 0.3s instead of 0.2s. Um, so how does Nigel carry on? So queen d2 strengthens the control of the dark squares. It prevents bishop g5s from black. So knight c5. Nigel played bishop c2. So he doesn't mind trading his knight on b3 because that knight's not brilliant there anyway. Um, so black took on d5. Now e takes d5. Is that stronger than c takes? Fractionally according to Ribka, but you know, Nothing much between them. The, pa the pawn structure change obviously is, is benefiting white here because now the, that bishop's got better scope, so maybe that's why Nigel preferred you know e takes rather than c takes. But c takes might have its advantages as well, like the c file later. So um, anyway, after knight takes b3, are here apparently uh, theoretically uh, technically <laughs> that move is queen d3 um, instead of immediately taking knight, so the threatening mate. Um, so then if g6, then taking on b3. But um, Nigel just took on, on, on b3 immediately. Now after knight d4, it seems white as, white's advantage has been evolving 
upwards in the last few moves because that's in the in the 0.5s so bishop a4 apparently good was just taking just just going into what black had probably you know calculated to to a large extent because here it seems um okay rook fc1 does black have a reasonable dark square blockade or not so let's test that if queen c5 bishop a4 and you know maybe there's like b4 now so maybe this this is this is okay for white i mean it's it's grown to be a big advantage according to Ripka, but it doesn't i'm not sure engines really still understand blockades um that much so i don't know maybe it's difficult to to win from this in the actual game um you know later Nigel had liberated his position further with a c5 in that kind of dark square blockade situation we just saw that c5 breakthrough wouldn't wouldn't seem so possible so so anyway so Nigel played bishop a4 black played b6 now Nigel took on d4 so there's some differences the queen isn't so clearly you know blockading on the dark squares and after queen takes d4 b takes Nigel gets in rook a1 so there seems to be more pressure on the black position and and these squares especially this square in particular so if the if the black queen's not able to blockade but bishop f6 queen goes to d2 now um rook a7 now nigel plays b3 so it's sort of half a pawn's worth of advantage here in theory according to Ripka at this depth but rook e4 yeah that's a nice move it seems you know just preparing naturally to double up rooks and, and strengthen the e-file pressure. Um, apparently g3 or rook e2, I'm not sure the engine knows really what it's doing in this position. So Nigel swapped off a pair of rooks. But the evaluation you know, did seem to shift uh, you know, in a large way here after rook e7. So apparently queen b6 and um, was you know, more solid. So wh why would the evaluation shift here? I don't really sort of know. Maybe it's this c5. Does Ripken like c5? It does like c5. So this breakthrough with c5 is making sure that this, you know, this pawn's going to be um, a very dangerous pass pawn now, or it's going to support c6, which this is a massive cramp now in Black's position. And it seems, you know, Black's having a really hard time now on the valuation. It's gone up to nearly a pawn's worth. So you can see visibly that there's a big space advantage. Black's getting squashed visibly, and the evaluation is also, you know, nearly like one pawn. So g3, a consolidating move, give, giving the king some air. Now rook e4. So the rook can potentially swing to h4 if the bishop wasn't an f6. Maybe also um, the queen can just go behind it to dominate the e-file. So it seems the positional strangulation strategy is, is being witnessed here. And um, so a bit of a waiting move, king g2. Now another little waiting move, seeing what black's doing. Now f4. So finally committing to another pawn move. But... It, in this situation, because White's kind of well placed, it, it didn't seem to experience the familiar evaluation drop that I get in, in my Blitz games. Every time I move a pawn, the evaluation drops. But here, it seems um, White's just increasing the advantage now, strengthening grip on the e file. Now g4, and increasing the evaluation now with this further squeezing and strangulation. The idea of g5 coming up. So, so now the bishop has less scope. This bishop on g7. Um, after queen a7 now c7 so this was a major blunder apparently queen a7 but it just shows the, the dangers of the position there's apparently a rook e8 is is winning with a mate in in seven here technically as well so takes takes king takes c7 king e7 c8 queen and this is going to be a mate in four now because of this queen queen e8 but uh, nigel played is this is still crushing of course just just c7 so just using this e8 square which Black had kept lost lost um, the ball here, but it was quite yeah. So it was quite a slow kind of torturous positional climb there, which started to sort of show after I think Nigel's knight d5 and c4. It started to go downhill for Black. Um, this pawn structure change started to go downhill, and basically I think it's it's nice how the dark square blockade never really um, happened in this game. So I think that's kind of instructive, and also you know, Nigel preparing. You know, he did strike while the iron was hot. You know, if if Black had got Queen C5, Queen Queen C7 as Queen C5, and it might have been a different story. You know, Black might have been able to to draw this game, 
But um, it was a continual squeeze after that on the king side as well. So a nice game. Um, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.